Three Uyghurs escape the detention center in Thailand, and authorities scrambling to find them. Meanwhile, Xi Jinping visited Xinjiang for the first time in eight years with important announcements. What could his visit to the region tell us about his plans? Meanwhile, China struggles to keep up with domestic issues. Millions are left in a new wave of COVID lockdowns. Citizens refuse to pay for their apartment mortgages, and thousands protest banks that froze their accounts. And finally, China aid sources found that a human rights lawyer has been subjected to forced labor at a prison in Hunan province. Welcome back to another episode of the Bob Fu Report. I'm your co-host, Jonathan Dingler, bringing you news and updates regarding human rights, religious freedom, and rule of law. We're happy to have you join us today. First, let's bring a brief update on the Mayflower Church. Sixty congregants of Shenzhen Holy Reformed Church left China in 2019 due to mounting persecution. The leader of Shenzhen Holy Reformed is Pastor Pan, a friend of early reigns Pastor Wang Yi. Wang Yi penned a joint declaration of faith in 2018 with over 400 house church pastors and leaders. After Wang Yi was arrested, many of those who signed were also persecuted. Pastor Pan was one of the signatories. Fearing their congregation would endure severe persecution, 60 members voted to leave mainland China. They arrived on Jeju Island, South Korea, because it's one of the only places you can leave from China with a travel visa. Before the Chinese Communist Party could follow them, COVID-19 broke out in Wuhan and across China and, as we know, across the world. Because they left China for religious freedom, China Aid has taken to calling them the Mayflower Church. Many of our viewers are aware of these exiles as we've reported on them on our website and on this very program. The South Korean government has not forcibly removed the Christians, but the Chinese government previously threatened members of the church that stayed in mainland China. In December, China Aid received reports that three members in mainland China were threatened and questioned at length. Not only that, but several women on Jeju Island are pregnant. Without legal status, medical care is not guaranteed for the delivery of these babies. In response to the uncertainty surrounding the Mayflower Christians, China Aid and Freedom Seekers International have deployed efforts to visit the island. Dina Brown of FSI visited last month to teach the children and meet with Pastor Pan. Now to us at China Aid, these people are not just a project. We long to see them arrive safely in a country that will guarantee their religious freedom and safety. Now Dina here has worked closely with these Christians and you can see it on their faces, masks or not. She actually contracted COVID-19 while traveling to South Korea so many of the congregants provided her with food, medicine, and good company, of course. We have several church partners from Texas who have gone to visit the Mainflower Church Christians, and we hope to continue these trips until there is a viable solution for their entrance into the United States or another country. Please, at home, we ask you to pray and remember the Mayflower Church the Chinese Communist Party has committed and continues to commit genocide in the Xinjiang region, the western part of China. An estimated 1 to 2 million Uyghurs, Kazakhs, and other Muslim minorities are held in concentration camps where prisoners are subjected to torture, medical experimentation, brainwashing, forced labor, and surveillance. Ovalbeck Turtakun, also known as Joseph, gave his account of the surveillance state in Xinjiang during his remarks at the 2022 Earth Summit. Authorities reportedly transformed middle schools and elementary schools into prisons and installed countless Hick vision cameras seemingly overnight. Well, President Xi Jinping recently vis visited the region for his first time in eight years. He announced to officials that Islam must continue to be oriented around Chinese characteristics and that he planned for Xinjiang to become a, quote, gateway into Central Asia. Xi was quoted as saying that he, quote, 
stressed efforts to fully and faithfully implement the policies of the Communist Party of China for the governance of Xinjiang in the new era, highlighting social stability and lasting security as the overreaching goal." End quote. These factors further cement the thought that Xi Jinping is not anywhere near finished with the region, and the oppression of Uyghurs will continue for the foreseeable future. Actually, according to a report from Radio Free Asia, Xinjiang recently started testing out self-driving patrol cars. These 20 new vehicles are patrolling the city's main shopping centers, tourist spots, and some residential communities 24 hours a day. An anonymous source told Radio Free Asia that, quote, these cars have a radar installed. If there is an accident or if it is interrupted or the police report a signal, it can sing the signal to us through that radar. What makes this so interesting is that three Uyghurs actually recently escaped detention in a Thailand facility. Many Uyghurs, understandably, want to leave China and try to make a new life elsewhere. Some try to escape through Thailand, but authorities usually arrest them before they can escape into the rest of Asia. Thailand authorities usually face a predicament with these Uyghur exiles. On the one hand, they reportedly don't want to send them back to China, where they will surely be killed. But on the other, they can't release them due to the pressure of the Chinese Communist Party. As a result, many Uyghurs have been detained at these facilities for as long as 10 years. The three men who were captured sawed their way through their prison cell bars and escaped. They're still at large at the time of recording this. Even though the reports from Xinjiang illustrate just how extensive the surveillance state has become, it appears it fails to quell any domestic dissent. Over the past month, protests and peaceful demonstrations surrounded a scandal involving four banks in Henan province. These banks froze the accounts of countless depositors, causing many to lose access to their life savings. Hundreds of protesters arrived outside the local China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission in May. Interestingly, many of them were derailed by China's health app. Many received a negative test for COVID before journeying to Xinjiang City, but their app suddenly gave a red notice once they arrived, meaning that they had to quarantine immediately. This is one of the highest documented cases of the CCP utilizing technology to, to discourage protest and cause a national outcry. Similarly, members of Zion Reformed were questioned due to their COVID health codes in April. For the next demonstration, bank depositors arrived as early as 4 a.m. on Sunday to avoid authorities. According to CNN Business, protesters tried to qualify their stance as against the local government, not the entire Communist Party or central government. It wasn't long before lines of plainclothes officers broke out at 11 a.m., descending the whole scene into violence. Authorities packed the protesters into dozens of buses, which took them to temporary detention sites in the surrounding area. Now, this isn't the only thorn in the side of the CCP. A mortgage boycott has developed across 18 provinces in 47 cities. Apartment renters stopped making payments by July 13th, according to state media reports. Space in real estate in Chinese cities are, is scarce. And as one might imagine, in order to reserve a spot in a new apartment complex, renters must pay rent for an apartment that doesn't even exist yet while paying for their current accommodations. Due to COVID-19 and other factors, many construction companies have not yet finished this, these projects, leaving countless Chinese citizens paying the price. Now, COVID-19 is not the only factor. Many of these buildings have actually been in development for over 10 years, and values are falling for the properties, which places many buyers in a bind. Many are fed up and refuse to continue their payments. Meanwhile, a new surge of COVID-19 has sent millions into lockdown and mass testing. Shanghai recently put several districts back into quarantine while reintroducing mass testing for the entire city. 
The city has hardly recovered from its two-month lockdown back in March, and a recent study showed that Chinese citizens use search engines to try and find ways to leave the country. These are all factors playing into the current social climate of China, and they determine how Xi Jinping will move forward, especially as he seeks, and likely will, serve a third term as the general secretary. In fact, it seems these are all already playing a role for the communist dictator. Xi made a personal visit to Hong Kong last month, but interestingly, all of his public remarks were attended by only a handful of officials and indoors. They were only relayed after the fact in a state-run media outlet. Then, he practically disappeared from the public eye until his recent visit in Xinjiang, which was also unexpected and of the same nature of his Hong Kong visit. Nobody knew that he was in Xinjiang until after he left, with another press release rattling off his goals and accomplishments for his trip. This course is somewhat divided on whether or not Xi will, sur- will secure his third term due to the economy, the zero COVID policy, and international scrutiny. Others believe that Xi all has but tightened his grip on the Communist Party and won't be going anywhere anytime soon. No matter the outcome, things are happening in China, whether the Communist Party likes it or not. We'll be sure to keep you updated on any possible developments regarding human rights and rule of law on our website, www.chinaaid.org. On July 5th, the family of Chen Yuan, one of the founders of Changsha Funing Organization, an NGO in Hunan province, received three letters from him. The letters expose inside stories of his experience in Hunan Qishan prison. His family is worried that the three-month confinement traumatized Chen Yuan mentally and physically. Cheng wrote three letters, one to his older sister, one to his wife, Xi Minglei, also known as Hope, and one to his father. He, de- he disclosed that he was suddenly transferred to Hunan Qishan Prison on January 18th and placed in a high-security section for three months. He was in solitary confinement until April 18th, and he was prohibited from writing letters to his family, giving his family phone calls, or using money from his debit account. The prison subjected him to forced labor during this time. Cheng Yuan lost weight and his hair started to turn gray. His letter to his older sister said, I have been locked up before April 18th and banned from letters and phone calls. I know that you all must be very anxious. In his letter to his wife, he disclosed, I barely had any personal time. I worked in the workshop during the day and my job was to operate the sewing machine. Every, every evening for one hour, I was forced to participate in studies and learn the superiority of socialism and experience the happiness of the great revival of China." Unquote. The lockup mentioned in Ching Yuan's letter makes his wife concerned. Xi Minglei said, said that he said that operating the sewing machine during the day, he had more gray hair and lost a lot of weight. Quote, my family and I cried for a long time while reading these two sentences. She learned the real situation of Qishan prison, Li Mingche, a Taiwanese pro-democracy activist. Chinese authorities sentenced Li Mingche to five years in Hunan Qishan prison on the charge of inciting subversion of state power. They released him in April of this year. Li Mingche and Cheng Yuan were in the same prison. And the Taiwanese activists quoted people who were locked up, saying that they were required to walk like a duck with their feet in the shape of a V while they did so. It was not only humiliating, but it's also debilitating to the body over time. Now, Xi Minglei summarized the general information about confinement based on others' experiences. Cells are about one square meter with no windows, leaving space only for a twin bed. Prison officers can roll call, call roll call every hour, and a blinding light is left on 24 hours a day. Prisoners are not allowed to cover their eyes with a comforter, and they're required to sleep in one pose, laying flat on their back with their hands outside the comforter. Previous inmates verify similar descriptions in other prisons. Solitary confinement usually penalizes prisoners who make errors with physical penalties, maltreatment, insults, 
deprivation of food and sleep and other tortures and illegal conduct. But Chen Yuan didn't break any rules of the prison nor offend any officers. The reason may be that Cheng Yuan didn't cooperate with authorities, the authorities' request to plead guilty during his case prosecution. Xi Minglei criticized the authorities, saying that they made up the case and tried defendants illegally. Quote, our family will not accept it. At the Earth Summit held in Washington, D.C., Xi Minglei and Luo Xingchun, the wife of human rights lawyer Ding Jiaxi, read a statement together for their imprisoned husbands. The Chinese government prohibited Chen Yuan from meeting with his attorney for his thousand-day imprisonment. They eliminated any visitation with his family and forced him to work in Hunan Qishan prison for 13 to 15 hours every day. Xing Minglei calls upon others to follow his case and ask the authorities to stop mistreating her husband and to release him. Please pray for Cheng Yuan and his family. Now, let's turn it over to Bob for a special report. Thank you, Jonathan, for that wonderful report. Uh, today, I want to um, focus on the upcoming uh, C. Biden uh, phone call, uh, which is very, very important and also in a critical time. The critical timing, uh, first of all, uh, President Biden uh, was uh, diagnosed uh, positive with the CCP virus on July 21st. Uh, ironically, the next day, July 22nd, the head of the CCP who spread the virus and killing millions of Americans and uh, sent a, a cable message uh, to President Biden and said, hello, wish you recover well. Um, man, if uh, I'm President Biden, if I read that cable, uh, unless uh, he does not believe the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, came from China, from the Wuhan virology lab, um, it's hard to swallow, right? And, uh, but today I want to uh, focus on the um, President Biden's um, announced uh, upcoming phone calls uh, in uh, 10 days. Actually, it was um, announced by himself voluntarily to the White House reporters um, just uh, on July uh, 20, uh, 20th. Um, the next day, he caught um, the CCP virus. And uh, during that uh, uh, kind of uh, chat with the White House reporters, he uh, first of all said, um, oh, the Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, reported visit uh, to Taiwan. Uh, my military people said it's not a good idea. And uh, by the way, I'm going to uh, have a, a phone call with President Xi uh, in 10 days. Well, friends, is this still uh, uh, the United States of America f president, uh, the speaker of the house, uh, the foreign policy uh, visit uh, to a destination would be dictated and decided uh, by the head of the Chinese Communist Party, by the a uh, Chinese uh, brutal dictator uh, who um, engineered uh, all this uh, uh, crisis after crisis and imposed this uh, COVID-19, um, at least uh, we now know, uh, deliberately uh, engaging the spreading uh, of the COVID-19 virus uh, when uh, Wuhan was already 
uh, widely uh, spread it uh, with the COVID-19, and even many other cities, according to uh, many of my friends. And uh, the CCP, uh, according to their directive from Xi Jinping, uh, was still covering up. But at the same time, when they locked down Wuhan city, they were still allowing hundreds of thousands of uh, the COVID infected traveling to, from Washington, D.C., San Francisco to Rome, uh, and Paris, London. So that's how this uh, virus actually was uh, spread it like fire uh, back to the year 2020, if you, uh, you remember um, what had happened that time. And now our foreign policy would be like managed by the Communist Party. And interestingly, uh, our uh, Speaker uh, of the House, Nancy Pelosi, uh, issued a statement after her party president, her party's own president, uh, President Biden, kind of uh, almost uh, like uh, using uh, a domestic media microphone uh, to make uh, a confession, uh, almost like uh, a public opinion pressure uh, to uh, Speaker Pelosi that, oh, lady, uh, Madam Speaker, don't go if you want my phone call with the dictator uh, Xi Jinping uh, successful. And uh, it's not the good timing. Uh, I, uh, according to our military, I'm wondering like which military general or personnel has uh, uh, said it's not the good timing for the Speaker of the House to pay a visit to Taiwan. As we all know, on July 9th, um, during the G20 uh, meeting in Bali, Indonesia, uh, when our own Secretary of State, uh, Anthony Blinken, um, uh, met with the Chinese State Councillor Wang Yi, uh, who is kind of uh, in charge of the China's foreign affairs uh, on behalf of uh, uh, Xi Jinping. Uh, after the meeting, the Chinese Foreign Ministry issued a statement and basically, this is what the Chinese uh, uh, government media stated. Uh, Wang Yi basically made a, 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 what is called as the three must not demands. Must not. Um, so let me read to you in case uh, you know we uh, kind of uh, are not misquoting anything. Uh, here's uh, in China's foreign ministry website on July 9th. Uh, Wang Yi gave a comprehensive overview of China's stern opposition or stern position on the Taiwan question. He stressed that the U.S. must be, this is the first uh, must be, uh, I mean, the must be cautious with his words and actions. And, um, and then he listed uh, these uh, three must not demand to the U.S. And, uh, and uh, again, continue the quotation. So must not send any wrong signal to Taiwan independence forces, must not underestimate the firm resolve of the Chinese people to defend their territorial uh, sovereignty, and must not make fundamental mistakes that would imperil peace in the Taiwan Strait. Peace? I mean, are we joking like uh, as if, uh, you know, uh, Putin or Hitler are very interested in peace uh, and uh, prosperity and uh, uh, reconciliation? I mean, the, this is from the Communist Party who has been sending fighter jets, sometimes like 20, 30 times a day to 
threaten Taiwan, and they're talking about peace in Taiwan Strait. And then Wang Yi also said Wang also refuted the U.S. erroneous、uh, views on Xinjiang, Hong Kong, and maritime issues, among others. Let me just、uh, very quickly kind of paraphrase what he said. Basically, the Chinese Communist Party asked the U.S. to agree uh, that uh, there is no concentration camp. There is no massive、uh, arbitrary detention of one to three million、uh, ethnic minorities,、uh, especially、um, uh, for the、uh, Uyghurs, Kazakhs, and many others、um, in the、uh, formerly known East Turkestan region, and、um, uh, do not talk about human rights in Hong Kong. Do not talk about、uh, Cardinal Zhang. Uh, the the the, the、uh, arrest of this uh, uh, the Hong Kong's conscience, and、uh, don't talk about um, uh, the um, Taiwan Strait or South China Sea,、uh, which China actually recently declared is a Chinese own inland water, and、um, essentially said nobody should uh, uh, sail their boat or. Uh, navigate、uh, in the military exercise over there. So, unfortunately, and I think it's、uh, dangerously, our own Secretary of State, in response, I quote again, with、uh, with the, by the Chinese, you know, three must not our own Secretary of State spell out a four, uh, uh, what is called、um, does not, almost like. Yes, sir. These are the things that we won't do, and、uh, we does we do not do in the United States. So, Secretary Blinken again, I quote this:、uh, outline the U.S. policy toward China, and state that the U.S. does not seek to engage in a new Cold War with China. Means, okay, yeah,、uh, EU Communist Party.、Mm-hmm. Uh, just、uh, doing well, and、uh, we—you're not our enemy. And、uh, the U.S. W- does not change China's system. Which system? It's the Nazi Communist Party system. So, t- U.S. made a commitment: does not change China's system. The three, the third, does not. Does not challenge the status of the Communist Party of China, and in the Chinese own language, actually, it's a little different.、Uh, I just、uh, only when you can read Chinese, you can understand. In the Chinese language, basically, the、uh, Chinese Communist Party said, Secretary Blan- Blinken uh, uh, made a vow. Basically, said、uh, the U.S.、Uh, won't challenge. The Chinese Communist Party status as the ruling party for China, like they will. So the, that means U.S. or Secretary of State supports the Communist Party basically in China to rule forever. And the 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 number four does not is the U.S. does not support Taiwan independence or seek to change the status quo. And this is too dangerous, and the Communist Party, according to our own uh, the CIA uh, uh, director、uh, William Burns, just recently said, it's not a if, but it's a when the Communist Party will invade Taiwan, and bipartisan senators, congressional leaders, recently are are do basically. About to pass uh, uh, what is called the CHIP uh, 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 law, CHIP means、uh, primarily is for the U.S.、Um, companies and world、uh, chip manufacturers to to、uh, to come to the U.S. to make、uh, the advanced chips from over、uh, F-35, uh, uh, the military flies. I mean, uh, uh, airplanes to our own cars. We ninety、uh, more than ninety percent. We depend on the 
uh, importation from Taiwan. And uh, the U.S., according to our own Commerce Secretary, said we produce zero of uh, most advanced chips in the U.S. territory. So are we going to allow the Communist Party to bully us in such a way that we won't even see a no? We won't have the guts to even uh, tell the Communist Party that you are a genocide regime. You are the one uh, declared war against the faith, including uh, demolishing thousands of thousands of crosses from the rooftop of the church building and uh, imprisoning hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, innocent citizens, uh, the uh, prisoner uh, of conscience, the house church, peaceful house church leaders and believers, and sentenced, long sentence uh, to those uh, uh, prisoners uh, from the Catholic Church, from the Protestant Church, from Falun Gong practitioners, from the Uyghur Muslims, from Tibetan Buddhists, and from the petitioners, from the human rights lawyers. These are the communities. The Communist Party are crushing them. And yet, we said, sorry, please, please have mercy on us. We won't uh, send our Speaker of the House uh, to Taiwan. It's not a good timing uh, because they have uh, uh, their uh, military threat. They have the military threat. They have been doing this since 1981. Are we going to be intimidated? Are we going to yield our foreign policy making to a communist party's thug, Xi Jinping? So may the Lord have mercy on the, uh, during this time. God bless you.